Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the curiously bizarre show that dares to investigate the wacky and wonderful worlds of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorists. And if you remember a few weeks ago, I delivered unto you, brave viewers, a brand new bizarre personality, that of former police officer, recent Christian, and truthy-telling whistleblower Gary Waterman. And he believed that he had cracked the biggest fraud in the whole of humanity, a, a preposterously grandiose claim made by a, a man who's, let's face it, a child in an adult's body. But I left that show with a bit of a teaser. I promised you that I would reveal the connection between Gary Waterman and Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. Well, that is exactly what I intend to do today. And so please, let's once again allow Gary Waterman to introduce himself in, in the way that only he can. My name is Gary Waterman. I'm a former police officer. I was in the police for 18 years. Now I've been in touch with some experts surrounding that technology into a 5G mast. Diverted away slightly to directed energy weapon systems links to the 5G network system. And potentially ULES cameras. Now that's all coming to light with the excess depths. Of uh, masks that are going up that appear to be potentially unsafe. Directed energy weapon systems all the way through. Masses of death. But also into the ULES low emission zone cameras within the city. Yeah. You know, mass deaths. But also a directed energy weapon system. Unsafe 5G technology. Who claim that the same technology has been implemented into the 5G masts that have been set up. The notion that 5G phone masts aren't communications devices, or that ultra-low emission zone traffic enforcement cameras are not cameras, well, by now, these are fairly standard conspiracy grifts. But they're new to Gary Waterman. He's recently adopted these conspiracy stories in order to become more relevant to the conspiratorial audience that seem to be the only people who will listen to him. But he's also changed his style of communication. He does a thing that many conspiracy theorists do, which is to seize upon maybe the tragedy or the news article of the moment and try and find a way of making it seem relevant to their personal conspiracy grift. And in this case, Gary really wants to talk about the tragic death of a woman called Nicola Bully. Her body was found dead, drowned in a river in Lancashire in the north of England a few years ago. As far as we're able to tell, this does not seem to be an example of foul play. She was not murdered, she just drowned. But Gary would have us believe that the death of this woman is somehow connected to the fraud that he believes he has personally discovered. Nicola Bully. Nicola Bully looks heavily around this fraud, fraud and the connection of directed energy weapons, connection to directed energy weapons, where the technology that is, or similar technology used in those weapons are now being in, installed and erected in 5G masts around the country uh, and within ULES ultra low emission zone cameras. Gary is directly connecting the death of poor Nicola Bully, the woman who drowned in a river in Lancashire whilst walking her dog to the, the existence of 5G towers and ultra-low emission zone cameras, despite the fact that uh, the latter, the ultra-low emission zone, well, that was nowhere near the place that this poor woman died. From what we can tell, there is no foul play at all involved in this tragic accident. At least the police or, or anybody competent to present such evidence have chosen not to do so. There doesn't seem to be anything illegal at all. It's just an unfortunate story, the sort of thing that will happen from time to time. When people go walking by rivers, some people will fall in, and if it's cold enough, wet enough, deep enough, people will meet an unfortunate wet demise. But Gary wants us to believe that this is due to some kind of vague, unspoken, technical conspiracy. I had an opportunity to actually speak with Gary Waterman, and so this was one of the things I was most curious about. I wanted him to explain just what the connection between the, the demise of this poor woman 
and the conspiracy that he perceives might be? Well, this was Gary's first attempt to answer that question. Around Nicola Bully, I started investigating or looking at the companies around her. And it was very clear that her husband, uh, her husband's company, whether he was part of it at that time or not, called BAE Systems, was developing a directed energy weapon with another company called Thales. Okay, T H A L E S. Okay, so we've established, maybe, I mean, I haven't checked this out, but according to Gary, Nicola Bully's husband was an employee of a major. British defence contractor, Thales, and uh, apparently that company were doing things, uh, presumably making machines, devices, ammunition, contraptions, the sorts of things that governments and uh, armies in particular might want to buy. Yeah, and they were developing the world's first lens uh, to be used in this directed energy weapon. So this was uh, back in... 20, end of, I think it was end of 2022, 23. And obviously Nicola Bully went missing in, uh, I think it was January 23. You can tell from Gary's smile that he thinks that he has presented a watertight case. The fact that at approximately the same time as this poor woman drowned, a company that that woman's husband worked for was also developing some technology that may or may not be associated with energy weapons. Uh, Gary's claim that this was the first ever radio lens is entirely preposterous because the means of reflecting and refracting radio signals have been known for a very long time. As Gary often says, he's not a technical person, but um, what kind of person is he? He doesn't seem to have any notion at all of what actually constitutes evidence. Do you have a source for for linking Nicola Bully's husband to that specific development, other than the fact that he was working for one of the companies? Because they're very big companies, aren't they? They are big companies, yeah. I mean, there's lots of connections. This is just one I'm telling you about. But is is, is you, there any you evidence that, that, that connects Nicola Bully's husband to that particular development? Only that he was part of BAE Systems. So no, no, not no, actually okay. him directly that I'm aware of. All right. I'm Even if I were to give Gary Waterman the benefit of the doubt here, let's presume for a minute that Nicola Bully's husband was an employee of uh, the Thales Defence Company, which was indeed working on some kind of secret military technology related to directed energy weapons. What on earth would that have to do with her drowning? Gary admits that he doesn't actually have any direct evidence linking this tragic death to whatever it is he believes, but never actually proves that the company was working on. What's the connection here? It's really just a, a smorgasbord of alleged coincidence and nothing else. Gary is really clutching at straws just to prove anything. I then had several other bits of information actually saying that these 5G, the 5G technology is harmful. Of course, I'm not technically minded. I think to these people, yeah, according to, I mean, I can't remember the guy's name. I'm only going by what other videos and people that I've spoken to. Gary is so vague. I put him on the spot in the most gentle possible way. I've invited him to explain the basis for his belief that uh, 5G telephone masts are in fact energy weapons, that uh, ULEZ traffic enforcement cameras are not cameras, even though everybody who has driven through a ULEZ with the wrong kind of vehicle knows from first hand that they certainly do seem to take photos and they will enable your council to bill you for, for driving that inappropriately polluting vehicle through the city streets. So despite all of this evidence to the contrary, Gary still seems to cling on to all of these conspiracy beliefs, but uh, can't explain why. He even seems to have trouble explaining how he first came by this particular knowledge or, or set of beliefs. Do you remember the name of the person who called you, uh, who, who initially delivered this sort of news about the, the ULEZ cameras and 5G? Yes, but I can't disclose that. Okay. Wasn't by any chance uh, a gentleman from Gateshead called Mark Steele, was it? 
I can't disclose who I spoke to, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. Sorry. Are you aware of who Mark Steele is? The name doesn't ring a bell. The name Mark Steele apparently doesn't ring a bell. Gary Waterman does not know who Mark Steele is. It's a funny thing that uh, everybody I communicate with about Mark Steele somehow suffers Mark Steele amnesia just before meeting me. It's like whether it's Gary or Sabrina, nobody seems to know who the man is. How is it that somehow Gary Waterman still has no idea who Mark Steele is? It's strange, isn't it? I was contacted by somebody and um, they basically said, look, I'm a bit of an expert in directed energy and all this. Are you as curious as I am about the person who apparently rang Gary Waterman out of the blue and dished the dirt on 5G, ULES cameras and directed energy weapons, but also considers himself to be something of an expert. I'm a weapons systems head up display expert. I was an expert in this particular technology. I'm a weapons expert. Right? Not only is he an electronic weapons expert. One of the leading experts in the world. The QC said I was an expert. I'm very, very expert. In I'm a weapons systems expert. I accept <laughs> that I was an expert. No, I'm, I'm very, very expert. In this is really where my expertise lies. He's an energy weapons expert. He's a world-renowned expert. He was an expert on 5G. You said that you were a weapons expert. I meant that I was an expert in this. I'm an electronics expert. I'm a weapons systems expert. The judge said I was an expert. He's extremely expert. I was an expert. The judge also said I was an expert. He's not a conspiracy theorist, he's an expert. The judge said I was an expert. I am very, very expert. I give up. I don't think I could possibly guess who the person was that called Gary Waterman, claiming to be an expert at directed energy weapons, and then fed him a, a, a cock and bull story about 5G and ULES traffic enforcement cameras. We'll never know, will we? I guess not unless Gary decides to tell us. <laughs> anyway, as I so gently quizzed Gary Waterman, I noticed that his story seemed to evolve a bit. I think he, he became a little bit conscious that I was curious about his connections to Mark Steele. So he decided to riff with a few 5G nuggets of his own. I, I wanted to know why he believed that 5G was in fact an energy weapon. But this is a new technology. Don't forget, we're talking actual um, weapons that are being produced around the same time. Now, the government have just test fired, as I'm sure you know, Dragonfire, which is a directed energy weapon in Scotland. They tested it in January, I think it was January, publicly and shot an item out of the sky. All of these directed energy systems are being produced at the same time as the 5G masks. According to Gary Waterman's impeccable and inescapable logic, 5G must therefore be an energy weapon because an energy weapon was being developed at approximately the same time concurrently with the deployment of 5G, which as we all know ran from approximately 2018 to the present day. That is what passes for logic in the crazy, whimsical, wackadoodle world of Mr Waterman. But what's your evidence that 5G is a directed energy weapon? What's your evidence that it isn't? But, but, but why would that imply that it's a directed energy weapon? That was my question. I'm not saying it's a directed energy weapon. I'm telling you what I've been told, that it's right. the similar technology that was used in directed energy weapons that has been put into these usual ULES cameras and the 5G MOS. Gary doesn't seem to take responsibility for any of the things he said. Like, only a few minutes ago, we, we heard him say that 5G and ULES cameras were, were dangerous things. And now we've just heard him back off the entire thing under the most gentle of questioning from yours truly. He doesn't have the courage or conviction to stand behind anything he says. Gary, you are a truly pathetic waste of space because you never stand up for a single damn thing. You have absolutely 
no idea. What about this ridiculous notion that ULEZ traffic enforcement cameras are something other than they appear? I mean, Gary, a former police officer, should be familiar with the idea of traffic enforcement cameras. After all, as a police officer, enforcing the, the legal flow of traffic would have been one of his responsibilities. What does Gary think about this bizarre claim that uh, ULEZ cameras are in fact weapons? Well, hold on, you let, wait, you said there's a, a, a directed energy weapon in a ULEZ camera? I have been told that there is similar technology to directed energy weapons in the um, ULEZ cameras as well. That's what I've been told. Yeah, and who might have told you that, Gary? Where did you get this information from? What's your source? What, where's your evidence? How did you come by the idea that a ULEZ camera was a directed energy weapon? What they call a camera, you've got transmitters in cameras. They say it's a camera, it's basically a directional weapons type technology. Not a battlefield fusion radar. Multi photon, multi fusion weapon systems are putting on what they call camera, what they call a camera. is basically a fusion technology, what they call a camera, the multi-phase, multi-photon, ionizing radiation emitters. Now, they call a camera, which is basically a multi-fusion uh, radar gun, a weapon system. Not a camera, it was the, the, the battlefield-derived uh, battlefield interrogation equipment. It's nothing like a camera. That's part of the 5G weapons system. It's not a camera. No, that's not a camera. Right, they're not cameras. It's not a camera. Not a camera. It most certainly isn't a camera. This ain't no camera. I guess we'll just never know who Gary Waterman's source is. We'll never know who the person that told Gary Waterman that uh, ultra low emission zone enforcement cameras are not in fact cameras, but uh, directed energy weapon devices imported from the battlefield. <laughs> who could it be? Who would come up with a, an interesting theory like that? Your guess is as good as mine. And if you have a guess as to the identity of Gary Waterman's top secret informant that he chose not to divulge to me, please leave a comment in the show notes. If that's not enough for you, if you're the sort of person who feels the need to be even more profoundly involved with Mind of Steel, well, I welcome you to my Telegram channel. And the link to that is at the top of my YouTube page. And if neither of those things appeal, well, just content yourself with that you have done me a, a great favor by watching this show all the way to the end. You know what? You're one of the good guys and I like you. And because I have such positive vibrations for you, dear viewer, the most persistent of people, maybe numbering only in a few thousand in this entire planet, well, just for you, I will be back in one week's time with another zany, wacky, flurfy nutbag to, to reveal just what some of the most ludicrous people on this planet are talking about when they think that we aren't looking. So I'll see you in one week.